Disability shoes need to be reimagined. Good morning, YouTube! What's up, guys? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. We have another stability shoe today, but it's not quite your average stability shoe. It is a play off of the ASICS Kayano 27, and it's light. Not L-I-G-H-T, L-I-T-E. Yeah, it's the Kayano Light. If you remember back in the summer, I did a first run impressions on the Kayano 27, and I put in another video that I didn't think I was gonna take it to 50 miles. It wasn't a bad shoe. I just don't love the way stability shoes feel. But because this loses a lot of those qualities, I figured I'd give this a shot, and I'm pretty excited to go for a run. I'm running extremely late. I'm in a major time crunch, so we're gonna lace these up. We're gonna go for a run, and then we're gonna talk all about my first run impressions of the ASICS Gel Kayano light. Let's go. and now it's time to talk all about the ASICS Gel Kayano Light. For a long time, I've been saying that stability shoes need to be kind of reimagined. Uh, we need to get rid of the plastic and the bulk and all of these crazy technologies in one shoe that make it really firm and kind of not so fun to run in. But I think in 2020, we're finally starting to kind of stray away from that and redesign stability shoes. We saw it in the New Balance Feel Cell Prism, and now we're seeing it in the ASICS Gel Kayano Light. If you guys remember back in the summer, I did a first run impressions on the ASICS Gel Kayano 27, and I liked this shoe. It was good for what it is, which is just your traditional stability shoe, but still it wasn't my favorite thing to run in, and I don't really dig that whole stability vibe. But if you like like stability shoes and you like the way they currently are and that works for your foot and your foot strike, then great. And guess what? This is not going away. But for the people who want a little bit less of all of that crazy tech, the Kayano Light is the perfect option. I will be making some comparisons to the Kayano 27 today, but we're mostly going to focus on the Kayano Light, which I can tell you right off the bat feels much lighter. So let's push the 27 to the side and go for the Kayano Light ride. Ooh, I should never do that again. Before we get started today, I do wanna let you guys know that this shoe was sent to me by Running Warehouse. However, they're not gonna see this video before you. ASICS is not gonna see this video before you. I'm not getting paid to make this video. I'm just sitting in my house in front of this camera making this review because I feel like it. All my opinions are my own, whether they're good or bad or in between. So without any further ado, let's get started. Let's start with the specs. The ASICS Jill Kayano Light is 7.6 ounces for a woman's size 7. And for my size 10 and a half women's, this shoe came in at about 10.2 ounces, which I'll tell you is already significantly lighter than the Kayano 27. It has a 13 millimeter drop of 25 millimeters of stack in the heel and 12 in the forefoot. And yes, I'm gonna say that the ASICS Jill Kayano Light is true to size. 
The upper of the ASICS Gel Kayano Light is a sustainable engineered mesh. And if you're wondering what they mean by sustainable, well, basically the upper is formed with recycled materials for a more eco-friendly design, which I think is pretty cool. It is soft, it's comfortable, and uh, it's fairly lightweight. There aren't a ton of overlays here, and in fact, the 27 didn't have a ton in the forefoot and midfoot as well. They're kind of dialing that back. And I will say that this shoe is fairly breathable. It's getting a little bit cooler here in New York, and when I took this shoe out, I did feel some airflow through that toe box. It's hard to say which is more breathable, the 27 or the Kayano Light. Um, but I'm gonna go with this probably being more breathable just because of the material and the way it feels. The laces are flat and somewhat stretchy. They stayed tied. We have a padded tongue. It's not gusseted, but it didn't move around side to side when I was running. We'll get to more of why I think that is later. There is lots of padding around this heel counter area. This is a little too much for my personal taste. I did have some heel slipping in this shoe. And even when I used the runner's loop, I did still feel a little bit of heel slip especially in my left foot. I mean, it wasn't a deal breaker, but something that I definitely felt, so I wanted to point that out. And we have a nice sturdy heel counter here for some extra support. This is, after all, a stability shoe. So in my experience, it was very snug in the midfoot and in the forefoot of the shoe. I loosened up those laces a little bit just to give myself some extra breathing room. I did have a little bit of a thicker sock on, but still it is pretty snug. I do appreciate that to some degree because it's gonna help you stay on that platform a little bit better. And I think that snugness is why this non-gusseted tongue stays in place because it really has nowhere to go. I think I'd like it to be a little bit less snug, maybe just give me a tiny bit more breathing room, but we'll see, maybe that'll open up a bit over time as I put more miles in the shoe. The good news is the toe box doesn't feel crammed. I feel like I have plenty of room in the toe box, both lengthwise and width wise. It's fairly wide, so I think it's gonna be accommodating to different foot types. And other than that snugness, I mean, it was pretty comfortable. I didn't have any issues with irritation, hot spots, blisters, nothing like that. I think they did a nice job. The midsole of the ASICS Gel Kayano Light is where it's set widely apart from the 27, and there's a lot of interesting things here to talk about, so it might take us some time, bear with me. The really cool thing about the Kayano Light that sort of reimagines stability shoes is that we get rid of that Trustic system, we're getting rid of Dynamic Duo Max, and we're just focusing on the platform here and how that can give the runner a more stable ride. So let's talk about the cushioning. So ASICS is using their flight foam technology here, but this is the cellulose nanofiber midsole foam. We saw this in the Nimbus Light as well, and ASICS claims that this is more sustainable and will also give the foam some extra durability. I also happen to think it makes the foam a lot softer. And of course, what's an ASICS shoe without some gel? We have gel in the forefoot of the shoe. You can't see it, but it's there. In terms of midsole feel, the Kayano Light feels a lot softer than the 27 in my opinion. And I have to say, I do actually feel that gel technology technology in the forefoot. I just get a little bit more softness there and actually some bounce, which I was surprised about. I took the shoe out in a couple of moderately paced runs and I didn't feel like I was desiring more underfoot. I didn't feel like the cushioning was bogging me down. It was a pretty positive experience in terms of midsole feel. I do also think that this foam is going to be very durable. We already know that regular flight foam is incredibly durable and uh, my Nimbus Light with the cellulose nanofiber midsole material is holding up just fine. So I really think this is gonna be the same case here. I think the feeling of this cushioning can contend with some neutral shoes out there. Um, so I was very impressed with that. Now let's talk about the stability of the Kayano Light. Let's bring this big guy in here for a second. So as you can see here, we have a Trustic system, which is plastic. Oops, that didn't work out. In here, we do not. So what ASICS is using here in the Kayano Light is a 3D space construction for the midsole or the base of the shoe. And basically that creates stability through a bunch of geometric shapes that are embedded into this midsole material. And this helps to correct the runner's stride. I look at it like this, I guess the Kayano 27 with the Trustic system and the Dynamic Duo Max and that sort of stuff, 
that force the runner's foot into that neutral foot strike. This kind of thing, this 3D construction, sort of gently moves you back to where you're supposed to be. It's tuned to address the differences between men's and women's gait cycles. And we have a much wider platform in the Kayano Light than we do in the 27. Oh, let me show you right here. So how does it feel to have a shoe that really just relies on the midsole to keep you stable? It feels really good. Not once during my runs did I feel like this shoe was controlling me. I felt in control of the shoe, which is so important and something you don't normally feel in a stability shoe. To me, the stability elements didn't feel intrusive at all in the Kayano light. It opens the door to people who want a stability shoe but can't stand all the plastic and the firmness and the heaviness of regular stability shoes. And it opens up the door to people who might have a more neutral stride who maybe just want a little bit of extra support but don't want to go full stability. So as you guys know, I overpronate. That's no secret here. Uh, so I wanted to see if I slow my footage down in this shoe how it looked compared to the Kayano 27. Well, I'm happy to say that they look exactly the same. I'm not falling inward any more in this shoe than I am in the Kayano 27. And that's just all the more reason to buy the light over the 27 to me. If I had to be nitpicky about it, I would say that maybe it feels a little bottom heavy. All of that stability technology and the midsole foam, it's all under your foot mixed with this Ahar rubber, which we'll get to. So at times it did feel a little heavy underfoot, but it's not anything too terrible. Overall, I really like the midsole construction of this shoe. I think they have a technology here that other brands should follow. If you turn the shoe over, you'll see that Asics is using Ahar rubber in the outsole. It says here that it's Ahar plus. So we'll take it. We have some in the forefoot with some cutouts for a smoother transition and flexibility. And we have a little bit on the lateral side of the midfoot, even more on the medial side of the midfoot. And of course, some rubber in the heel. Touching on what I said earlier about it being bottom heavy, I think the rubber does contribute to that a bit. It's thick. I would love to see it a little bit thinner to see if it would improve that bottom heavy feeling and make the midsole feel even softer. But with all that said, the traction is very good on this shoe. Ahar rubber is always pretty solid. I took it out on drier days, but it gripped onto the pavement just fine. I think runners are gonna get a ton of miles out of this outsole. The ASICS Jill Kayano Light is $159.95 on runningwarehouse.com. I think that's a little too much money, I'm not gonna lie. The Kayano 27 is $159.95, so wouldn't they want to make this shoe, which is the Kayano Light, a little bit lighter on your pocket? I think ASICS would have benefited from making the shoe like, I don't know, $140, $130. If you're interested in picking up your own pair of the Kayano Light, I will put a link in the description of this video. Keep in mind, it is an affiliate link with Running Warehouse. However, that doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel. So I can help you pick between the lights and the not so lights of all the brands. This is the kind of stability that I want. This is what I've been waiting for. Without a doubt, I will be taking this to 50 miles and I'm actually excited to do so. Well guys, that concludes my first run impressions of the ASICS Kayano Light. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe. And when you're done with all that, hit that notifications bell down below so you can find out every time I upload a new video. Now, if we could just get this colorway in this shoe, then that would be a lot better. I have some more videos for you guys next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like heller. See you next time. It. Good girl. Ruby, look at me. Good girl.